So you want to know how to make your shoulders stronger than ever. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you advanced shoulder conditioning. And to be honest, this is even this is getting out of rehab and this is getting into full on shoulder conditioning. I'm going to show you an absolutely amazing routine that I've put a ton of research into developing. And I'm going to give away the biggest mistake that people are making when conditioning their shoulders. So you don't want to miss that one. Stick around to the end for it. All that and more coming up. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image. Hi everyone, in case we haven't met, my name is Rad Burmeister. I'm one of the co-founders of Unity Gym and co-creators of the UMS, the Unify Movement System, formerly known as the FMS, where we teach you how to nourish and move instead of diet and exercise. And hey, give me a little shout out and hit the like button. Let me know where you're watching from so that I can uh, say hi and give you a shout out back. And uh, we're going to get right into this today. We've got some really... Uh, Yanni's laughing at me. I'm looking at Yanni's comments. Um... Uh, we've got some really cool stuff to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get you straight out on the gym floor. I'm going to take you through this absolutely amazing routine to condition your shoulders. This is advanced shoulder conditioning. This is the real deal stuff. And then we're going to come back in here. I'm going to talk about the biggest mistake that people make when they're doing shoulder conditioning. And I'm also going to answer any questions that you have. We've got some really good questions that have come in in the last 24 hours. If you have any questions at all about anything that we do, especially about shoulder conditioning, put them in the comments section and I'll get to them when I come back. Now, the key insight for today is the importance of correct technique. So if you take nothing out of today's show except this, this is the number one thing. When you're doing shoulder conditioning, the biggest mistake that people make is that they rush the process and they don't understand how to do the correct technique. And it is like when you're doing a shoulder movement, if you're doing a, a movement where you have to um, flex your shoulder like this and you do it with an elevated shoulder versus a depressed shoulder or if your shoulder is meant to stay depressed but as it comes up it elevates, it's completely different and you will target a totally different um, group of muscles. Now to the, to the layman, to the average person, that looks exactly the same as that or that. You might not even be able to tell that I did three completely different things there. Because if you just look at my arm, it looks exactly the same. But the difference is what's going on in my shoulder with the way that my scapula is being controlled. And if you don't understand how to do that, you are not going to achieve a great result. And where people get it wrong is they're doing movements, they do it for a couple of times and they think, I can't feel anything, I'm going to increase the weight. I still can't feel anything, I'm going to increase the weight. And a lot of these movements, the muscles are very, very small. So when you're doing the right movement and training the muscle correctly, even for a strong person, you're not lifting a lot of weight. So as soon as you increase the weight, you immediately negate your ability to be able to recruit those muscles properly and the prime movers take over, the big muscles like the deltoids, the biceps, the lats, the pecs, the big muscles that move the, the uh, shoulder joint. And that's not what we want when we're doing shoulder conditioning. So that's the big insight. I hope you guys understand that. Again, make sure you stick around to the end so that you uh, learn the biggest mistake that people make. And uh, again, if you've just tuned in, let me know where you're watching from, say hi, leave any uh, questions that you have in the comments, I'll get to them at the end. So, the first movement that we're doing today is, uh, I might have done this out of order, um, but the order for today is actually not as important as all the other days, so, so it's not a big deal. So the first movement is called a Powell Raise, and what we're going to do here is keep that shoulder depressed, and then from here, I'm going to keep my arm completely straight, raise up, and then down for four, three, two, one, hold it for one, up, down for four, three, two, one, Pause, up, down for four, three, two, one, pause. So, things you're looking for. Number one, don't move your body to create the movement. Number two, make sure that the hand and the weight travels vertically, okay, straight up and down like that. Don't pull the weight out this way. Number three, when, as you raise your arm, your scapula will naturally retract, which means it pulls back towards the spine. When you're coming down, keep it retracted, and the very last thing that you do is let it go, like that, okay? And um, the way that you lay, you, you're kind of just resting on your arm here like this. This leg's not doing anything. 
This leg is pulling back here so that that's what's stabilizing me. And for those of you that are vertically challenged, that are a bit short, you can actually do it like this. So you can lean on the bench this way and you can still train the movement in the same way. I don't like this because I'm not as stable, but for a lot of people that are short, you just won't be able to get your foot on the ground in the first variation that I showed, so you'll need to do it that way. So that's called the 45 degree Powell raise. And as you get better, you increase the difficulty of that by lowering the um, bench. So you go from 45 degrees down to 30, then to 15, and then to flat. Um, and you use progressive overload and periodization to do that. The next one is the 45 degree trap three raise. So this is a really complex movement and if you don't understand the instructions that I'm about to give you, you're not gonna get a great result with this. It's very, very important that you pay attention here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line myself up to the bench. If I'm holding the weight in my left hand, I'm gonna take a small step back on the left foot and I'm gonna lean forward so that my spine is roughly at a 45 degree angle. Okay, so if this is my spine being at a 90 degree angle and this is my spine being at a zero degree angle, we're gonna go at a 45 degree angle, okay? Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start the movement by retracting the scapula. I'm going to then raise my hand up on a 30 degree angle. So if I'm looking forward, if that's zero degrees, 45 degrees, then 30 degrees there, okay? So I'll look towards the camera again. If I go like this, so if I'm here and that's zero degrees, 45 degrees, 90 degrees, I'm gonna come up on a 30 degree angle. So just before that 45 degree mark. Elbow's gonna stay straight, thumb pointing up. So watch. One, one, two, three. And then release the scapula. Retract, up. One, two, three, release. Retract, up. One, two, three, release. Things to look for. Don't rotate the body. Don't bend the elbow as you come up. If you can't get the bicep past your ear, so if you get to there and that's all you can do, first thing to do is to drop the weight, try a lighter weight, and the second thing to do is to check your shoulder flexion, how much, how far you can get your arms up. But the goal is that you can retract and raise the arm high enough that the bicep goes past the ear, okay? What you can do to increase the difficulty with this as well, you can actually hold in the top position for six, five, four, three, two, one, and then down. That really makes it hard. What you wanna be doing is making sure that if anything, you're turning the hand out at the top, don't let the hand turn in. And uh, watch this video again. I'm not gonna to take too much time repeating the same thing, but if you don't get those um, all of those cues right, this exercise really doesn't do that much good for you, okay? Now, the next one that we're going to do is a Cuban rotation. So, for this one, if you're still recovering from a shoulder injury, then you probably want to use dumbbells, but because this show is more about, um, you know, real conditioning going beyond that rehab point, um, so you've already rehabilitated your shoulder back to where you can start doing some more complex movements. And the complexity of these movements is on another level compared to all of the stuff that we've been doing in this program. So if you are rehabilitating your shoulder, make sure you follow the steps in the videos from this week. So to set up, we're gonna start with the uh, barbell just above the head like this, and the uh, upper arm is gonna be horizontal. And I'm going, to, I'm going to exaggerate doing the wrong thing. Look at my shoulders. Now I'm going to retract and depress. So that means that they pull back and down. And then from here, we're gonna go three, two, one, up. Three, two, one, up. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my elbow still. Three, two, one, up. Okay, so I'm trying to keep my elbow relatively still so the movement is happening like that, not like this. I'm exaggerating, of course, but we want to keep that point still and this point still. So the whole humerus is set back, the scapula is set back, the humerus stays still, and the only thing that's happening is the rotation so that we're really targeting the external rotators, the rotator cuff. So I just need to remember all of the exercises I'm doing today. I've done those three, four, 
five. I need to just check my notes because um, there's six exercises in here and for some reason I can only remember five. So, ah yes, of course. Okay, next one, unilateral active hanging. So from here, this is starting to get really difficult. For a lot of you, this is gonna be well beyond what you can do and if you can't yet do, uh, a um, bilateral active hang like what we did yesterday, then you're really going to struggle with this one. So from here, what I'm doing is I'm grabbing on to the bar with one hand, okay? And then from here, I'm going to pull and hold for three, two, one, and then down. Three, two, one, and down. So I'm going from a dead hang, complete hang, and then from here, I'm going to pull my scapula down, depression, but also retract so that my chest lifts up and the elbow stays completely uh, straight. If you do it properly, your shoulders will go from here to being flat to the ground, okay? From here to flat to the ground. Watch again when I do one more, just film from front on so you can see my shoulders. From here, Okay, so you want to get those shoulders flat to the ground. All right, the next one, and unfortunately for this one, um, requires a piece of equipment that in Australia costs about $170. I don't know how much these are in the US, a body blade it's called. And when I was told to get one of these, I looked for cheaper versions and I couldn't find it. I'm pretty sure that this is a patented device and uh, no one's been able to do cheaper versions of it yet. So you definitely don't need this if you don't want it, but this is unbelievable what it does for shoulder conditioning. And I'm so happy that we got one. So up to you whether or not you want to invest the money. And what you can do with it is, is totally different. There's so many different things. At a basic level, um, you can do where you keep your shoulder in a safe position like this and you wobble and go through external and internal rotation like this. And what this is doing at a more advanced level, you can come up to here and you can do your external and internal rotation like this. And the, the difficulty that's going on, like the, the amount that my rotator cuff is having to work to stabilize the shoulder during that movement is on another level. And that's what the rotator cuff really does. Um, the rotator cuff is, is mostly used for stabilization. So the rotator cuff is a whole series of muscles and they're used to stabilize the shoulder. Um, they do, some of them do work movement, they assist in movement, but it's arguable, a lot of, it's, it's quite contentious the way that the research around what the rotator cuff actually does, the way it just keeps evolving and changing every five or 10 years, they keep telling us that it has a different use than what they thought it did. Um, but this is an amazing tool for it because it's, it's putting the rotator cuff under an amazing amount of strain through these isometric contractions, changing all positions, and it's a beautiful piece of equipment. So there's heaps of different things you can do. I mean, you can um, you know, move this way, you can move this way, you can just, like wherever you're weak, wherever you, um, go and you feel, oh wow, that's really weak, that's where you want to do it because that's the idea of, uh, of something like this, um, which is actually how the gymnastics rings work as well uh, and that's something that we're going to be going deeply into tomorrow, so make sure you watch tomorrow's episode. The last one that we are going to do is called a ring hinge on the gymnastics rings and this is uh, again for as far as shoulder conditioning goes, as far as um, going through rehab, this is, this is an advanced exercise that you would do, okay? So from here, I'm gonna start from down here, and then I'm going to hinge my body back like this. And what I'm looking for is a lot of things here. I'm looking for that my hips stay still, and my body moves from the hips. I'm looking for that all of the movement comes from the shoulders, that it's the shoulders that create the movement. Come over here, Richie, just in case we're losing. I f we forgot about that camera. Um, the, you want the, uh, the, the shoulders to create the movement so we're not pulling from the abs. And what you're doing is, there's so many things going on there. You're retracting and depressing the scapula, so pulling back and down. And at the same time, you're rowing with your arms. And at the same time, you're externally rotating with the shoulders as well. So it's a very complex movement as far as the shoulders go, which is why I've left it until right at the end of this series. All right, so that's the workout. Those are your uh, five movements 
let's jump back in and um, have a uh, little wrap up here. So again, I want to um, ask anyone that's just tuned in to please um, give me a little shout out. Um, leave something in the comment. Just tell me where you're watching from so I can sing out to you. And uh, also hit the like button. It helps us so much. We get so many people telling us how, how grateful they are for these videos and everything that we do. And if there's anything that you could do for us, it would be just hit that like button and leave a comment. Now, let's have a look. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I want all you guys, actually, you know what? I'll answer your questions here first in the comments, and then I'll go through the ones that have, that have come through us via email in the last 24 hours. So, um, Socrates Public Service, thanks for tuning in again, brother. I've seen you in here. Um, I hope it, it is, brother. I can't tell if you're a man or a woman by this, so uh, excuse me for the assumption. Um, but uh, thank you for tuning in to all of these videos this week. You've, uh, you've been a great um, audience member. So, hi, really appreciate this series and glad I found Unity Gym as you address the issues that apply to me exercising in middle age. And don't we just, because we're all middle age here ourselves. <laughs> um, couple of questions. I also have the mobility and stretching routines. In the early stages of injury, first phase, four to six weeks, do you advocate stretching and if so, for how long and how often? That's a really good question and it's something that I'm not going to brush over. So the first thing you have to understand is um, if you've got a muscle tear or if you've torn any of the, of the um, tissue in your body, then stretching is not a good thing because the tissue is trying to, trying to regrow, rejoin itself together and you're tearing it apart. That said, the biggest problem is that people have is understanding the issue intensity continuum that we spoke about yesterday. So you, you've got to think, the injury that you did, an injury is always done by an abusive load as far as what your body can handle. So you've put an abusive load on your body and uh, it couldn't handle it and an injury has happened. So the first thing you have to do is remove the cause. So if it, you did it playing sport, um, we get a lot of martial artists that tune into this channel that tell us you know, they did something when they were kicking or doing martial arts and when can they get back to training. The truth is, unfortunately, you can't get back to training smartly um, until the symptoms have gone. So you have to remove the training, remove the thing that you can't control the intensity on because you can't control how hard you're training in a sport or a martial art or um, even in running, you know. It, I wouldn't even um, say that running is a good thing to do. But like you might say, oh, I'll just go for a light jog. But there's still um, things that come up in your run that are unpredictable that you have to react to. Whereas doing rehabilitation exercises like stretching or strengthening, you can totally control the intensity of those and you can work your way up the issue intensity. So back to your question, should you be doing stretching when you've got an injury? You should be working within the issue intensity continuum. You can play around with some very light stretching. So you drop your stretching right back to a one or two out of 10, regardless of how hard you were stretching before. And same with your strength training and you see how your body reacts to it. And if, the, if you don't get any pain, if the symptoms don't get worse, then you can increase the intensity a little bit. If you don't start to feel pretty quickly that, this, that you start getting better, like within um, a week that your symptoms start to improve, then you need to see a physiotherapist and, or a practitioner and you need to regress your movements even further or even completely remove the thing that you are doing. And that's the um, general rule of thumb for how you apply stretching into the, uh, the rehabilitation process. Um, Firas, Firas from Toronto, um, thanks for tuning in brother and thanks for the love. Um, so Socrates has jumped back in with the range of motion in say the ankle by rolling onto either the in or out side of the foot and applying weight, is there a risk of creating instability in the tendons, i.e. too much range? Um, look, it's, uh, there's a risk of wrapping yourself in cotton wool and um, turning into somebody that um, you know, gets injured when a strong breeze blows on you. Um, and I mean that with all sincerity. So you, you absolutely should take your ankles through inversion and eversion is what you're talking about there, rolling them in and out. Um, again, in, under a controlled load. So we do in our, in our warm up for our lower body every day, we intentionally force the ankles as far as they can go to inversion and eversion and put our full body weight on them. Because over time when you do that, the tissue tolerance builds up. And then when you do roll your ankle in an unpredictable circumstance, um, it will handle it. And uh, if you don't, if you never ever take your body to those extreme positions, then when it happens in an uncontrolled environment, you will seriously injure yourself. Um, so I hope that helps. 
Uh, Quok, morning brother. Thank you for tuning in and thanks for the love. Karina, tuning in from Sydney. Began the Mobility Masterclass this morning. Yay, love the experience of progression. Awesome, Karina. Um, I'm loving seeing your progression and hearing your stories because you're really, uh, you're really just getting started with us with the programs that you purchased and uh, you're gonna see some amazing results. So uh, keep letting us know how you're going and keep the uh, questions coming in. Um, Quok's laughing. I'm, I'm not sure what I said uh, that caused you to laugh, Quok, because I've uh, just looked at it recently. <laughs> All right, cool. So, look, I'm going to jump into the questions now uh, from people that have emailed us and, uh, and also people that have commented on our videos in the last 24 hours. So I'm going to say again, if anybody has any questions, please put them in the comment um, section here so that I can answer them and uh, stick around. Uh, I'm going to really reveal what the biggest mistake is that... Uh, people make, I've already alluded to it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna really double down on what that is. So, let's have a look here. Uh, Robert Burwell has said, uh, he, he originally asked he's getting pain in his hip um, what, uh, when it stretches, what's that from? Actually, sorry, a popping sound, I remember he said. Uh, so he's saying, hi Rad, no pain in my hip and I was in a car accident when I was younger, I fell out the door onto my side. So Robert, guaranteed that is where uh, that popping sound is, uh, is coming from. Yeah, Yanni's saying hit the like button, please. Everybody that's watching, please, please, please hit the like button. It means so much to us. It'll take you two seconds. Just hit that like button. Um, so yeah, r absolutely, man. If you fell out of a car and banged on your side um, when you were younger, then that is absolutely what's gonna cause that popping sound in your hip. You know, there, there would be some permanent damage that goes on from an injury like that. So if it's not causing you pain, um, then yeah, man, just keep going with it and just be aware, don't push yourself. It's always this concept of using uh, progressive overload, so not just jumping up into something that's well beyond what you can do, just gradually increasing the intensity of everything that you do, allowing your tissue tolerance to build up over time. And if you do it safely and effectively, you should be fine, I don't think you're gonna run into any problems. Um, uh, another one from Robert Burwell. Uh, Having trouble getting into protraction, any tips would be appreciated. Really like the channel. Thank you. Again, thank you, Robert. Um, trouble getting into protraction, there's so many things you can do. If you get our 18 minute stretching routine, as part of, there's a, a bonus uh, stretching program that you get with that called the loaded mobility routine. And that is, um, uh, phenomenal. It's got some really good exercises for learning how to control protraction. But um, just to let you know what you can do is you can honestly, you can hold your hands in front of you and just push forward into protraction and then pull back into retraction. Push forward into protraction, pull back into retraction. And um, then to progress that, you can put your hands on the wall. So hands on the wall and just go from retraction to protraction. And then you can go down with your hands on a bench and then eventually into a, what's called a scapular push up on the ground. And you, it's just practice, man, because what's weak is the, the central nervous system's ability. So the, the mind muscle connection, it's the ability for your body to activate the muscles that, that control protraction. And it's a really common thing. Um, straight arm scapular strength is a very hard thing for people to learn. Um, it takes a lot of work to understand how to swish, uh, how to switch those muscles on. Um, and people struggle with it all the time in the gym. We get people coming into Unity Gym and we show them the straight arm strength movements for the first time and they give us this really confused look saying, I don't feel anything, I don't feel anything. And it goes back to what I was talking about with this shoulder conditioning. It's a matter of just pushing through, you know, I heard years ago, so I can't, I, I don't know if this is uh, the truth or if there's been more research that's come out that's proved something different to this, but I'm sure it's definitely in this ballpark figure. Um, you know, we've all heard of this 10,000 hours rule. It takes 10,000 hours to master something. I've heard that it takes 3,000 repetitions minimum before you become proficient in a movement. And I always use this analogy because a lot of people can relate to it. Imagine being taught how to serve a tennis ball in tennis for the first time. So you've never ever picked up a tennis racket. And you can sit down in the theory room and have um, Roger Federer explain to you for three hours how to serve a tennis ball, the way that you stand, the way you throw the ball up and then you catch it and hit it. But get out on the tennis court, and I played tennis for a year or so when I was a kid, so I know all about it. Even just to throw the ball up and make it go straight up and come down is a bloody challenge. It goes forward, it goes left, it goes right, it goes everywhere but where you want to do it. And it just takes so many repetitions before 
you can actually get that serve to go where you want it to go. So the same thing happens with something like protraction. You have to just do it over and over and over again and all of a sudden it all starts to come together and make sense for you. So I hope that helps, brother. Um, let's have a look. Andrew Ramsey, uh, thanks for this video. It sounds, this is from the Shoulder Rehab Beginner Bulletproof Workout. Thanks for this video. It sounds like I had a similar injury to the one you described. My right shoulder was lifting a lot higher than the left and I had no control over it. I'm now about a year on since my injury and I'm now starting to get some range of motion. These exercises are exactly what I've been looking for. Cheers, Andy. That's awesome, Andy. It's a shame you didn't get it diagnosed, but at the same time, um, in my experience, the majority of shoulder rehabilitation starts with the, the kind of exercises that we've shown in this series. So if you do this properly and you start from the beginner one, go to intermediate and then to advanced, you should see some amazing improvement and um, strap yourself in for a 12 month journey. Um, don't think that it's gonna take you, you know, six or 12 weeks. Think to yourself, this is gonna take me 12 months to get back to where I want it to be. And if you do that, hopefully you won't be um, let down by it taking longer than that. Okay, uh, Arcadio is saying, cool, that's what I've been waiting for. Thanks again. I'm from Poland, a little country in the center of Europe. Uh, so I think you have good range. Peace. Thanks, brother. Uh, I know where Poland is. My uh, Yanni and my father is uh, German, and I was actually born in Denmark. I came to Australia when I was very young. And um, lastly, here we've got on the mobility training, the new pancake tutorial. James Castellanos is saying, finally, videos that provide true practical advice with immediate results. Thank you so much, James. Um, it's really great to hear that people around the world are enjoying our videos so much. It, it just means the world to Yanni and me, and it's our mission to give away better content for free than what other people charge for, so it's really good that you guys are enjoying this stuff. Um, so let's have a look. I've got a couple of uh, shout outs here and a few questions in the comments. If you've just tuned in, let me know where you're watching from. Hit the like button for us, and uh, any questions that you have, put them in the comments there. So, uh, Firas is saying, I have trouble getting my arms past my ears. I'm guessing with shoulder flexion. I have your stretching and mobility routines and I roll out my chest with a ball because it's limiting my movement. Anything else you might suggest to do? Absolutely. Um, so, the stretching routines that we have are brilliant. They're very, very good. Um, but we've also got a couple of videos on YouTube about increasing overhead mobility. So um, if you, um, you want to check one of those out, um, the, the, the main strategy with overhead mobility, this is, th there are diff limiting factors that are different for each person. But the, but the most common thing that we find is tight pec minor tight lats and also even a tight tricep and there's a really good stretch that we do or, or um oh yeah it's a loaded stretch called the lat tri insertion stretch it's, it's going to be pretty hard for me to actually it's impossible for me to demonstrate but i can describe it so you're going to grab a barbell or a dowel rod at a basic level in a pronated grip so your dowel rods here and you can load it up with some small weights on it on the outside and what you're going to do is put your elbows on a bench and then you're going to create a hollow body by sucking your stomach in, feet on the ground behind you. So from shoulders to feet, your body should curve that way. If your spine curves this way, it's totally wrong. You have to suck the stomach in. And then from there, you put all the weight on the elbows and you keep the dowel rod off your shoulders. So you don't let the dowel rod rest on your shoulders. You keep it up and you let your shoulders drop down as far as it'll go. And what that does is it puts load in the tricep and the lat and it, it does a loaded stretch for both of them at the same time, which is really, really good because they're both um, limiting factors in shoulder flexion. Now, that, that's, those are the, that's the main, oh, and one last thing as well, sorry, is thoracic extension. So getting on uh, a foam roller on your thoracic spine and also the back balls on your thoracic spine as well. If you Google um, back balls, B-A-K-B-A-L-L-S, uh, again, we've got so many videos on this stuff, you can watch it uh, all on YouTube. So yeah, that's the, that's the main strategy for increasing shoulder flexion. Also, sorry, the last thing, hanging, just passive hanging. So both arms up, grabbing onto a, um, a chin up bar and hang for an accumulated total of between four and seven minutes a day. If you do that every single day and you do the, the strategy that I just told you, then your shoulder flexion will be the best that it's ever been in about 12 weeks time and you'll, um, you'll be living in a whole new body, man. It's gonna really change for you. 
Um, so our last call, does anybody have any final questions before I sign off for today? So let's talk about the biggest mistake that people make. The, as I said before, um, the, I alluded to this already when I was talking about the insight. The biggest mistake that people make when they're doing shoulder conditioning is that they can't feel the muscles that they're trying to work. So as a coach, we're explaining, uh, you wanna, you know, you're doing this and you're trying to, um, you're welcome for us, you're trying to use these muscles, the lower traps or the rhomboids or the external rotators or the upper traps or whatever it is. Um, and we're describing that and people are doing the exercise and going, oh, I can't feel those muscles, I can't feel the muscles, I'm gonna grab a little bit more weight. Because that's normally what people do, right? If you're doing bicep curls and you think, oh, I can't feel my biceps working, I'll grab some more weight. Oh, wow, there we go, now I can feel my biceps working. But you know why? You know why that works, or with the squat, why that works? Because that is such a simple joint. The elbow joint is a hinge joint, which means that the only thing the elbow does is flex and extend. Rotation doesn't actually happen within the elbow joint. It happens from the humerus up in the shoulder, and it happens in the wrist, okay? So that rotation that you look at there, that's not happening in my elbow joint. That's from the uh, radius and ulna uh, moving around each other to create rotation in the wrist. And then any uh, rotation that happens here is actually happening in the shoulder joint. So the elbow itself, all it does is flex and extend. So for me to go, oh, I can't feel that my biceps grab more weight, ah, oh, no problem. It's because it's such a simple movement that it's really hard to get wrong. Whereas when you're talking about shoulder conditioning and we're trying to um, depress and retract or protract and elevate or protract and depress and at the same time you're also trying to row or flex the shoulder or flex and externally rotate or all these different complications of movements it's really really hard to get it right and very very easy to get it wrong so the biggest mistake that you can make is when someone like us coaches you and say this is what you need to do and you need to start on a very light weight and you can't feel it and you think oh, I'm just going to increase the weight now I just realized I forgot to say the kind of weights that you want to start on, especially with the trap three raise and the power raise in this workout, you're looking at for the trap three raise for a beginner, honestly, anywhere from zero kilos, as in no weight, just the weight of your arm, up until about three kilos is the maximum that I would recommend any beginner to start on this weight. What I mean by that is we get a lot of people to use just their arm and just to retract and raise and externally rotate at the top to get the feeling of the movement. No weight at all. And then maybe go from a half to a one to a one and a half because we've got half kilo weight increments at Unity Gym. For the Powell raise, I would recommend for a beginner to start on between probably one and four kilos, depending on how strong you are. Some beginners can go up to five or six, but for most people I'd say one and four kilos. So that's the biggest mistake. Not feeling the muscle and then thinking, oh, I'm going to add more weight to it. Don't do that. Just bank some repetitions. Learn how to retract and depress your scapula whilst you're doing the movement and you'll get an amazing result. Yanni is uh, just saying tomorrow we're talking about this to a whole new level with the best upper body strength program. That's absolutely right. We are. We're going to... Um, we're gonna bring this all together. So this whole week, we've been talking about shoulder conditioning and we've started with beginner, intermediate and advanced shoulder rehab to take you from an, a horrendous injury right through to being really conditioned and, and, and ready to train. And tomorrow, we're gonna to talk about how we now take this into upper body strength training on an advanced level with a very, very well thought out program using some of the best methods that we've ever come across in our 16 years of being personal trainers. So tune in tomorrow. And if you haven't already, if you're not on our database, you're missing out on all of this amazing content that we send out um, and you just want to download the flexibility blueprint. There's a link in the description for this. Um, it's a free download and it'll give you some really good use of full information and you'll make sure that you're getting all of our good content that's coming out. Besides that, thank you everyone for tuning in. I just keep looking down to make sure I've got no more questions to answer. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for all your engagement, for all your love. And I will see you tomorrow for our programming for upper body workouts. See you later, everyone. Health is about performance, not just body image. You better be willing to accept what you're gonna have to do to get there. We'll start focusing on movement goals, strength goals, flexibility goals. When you nail that skill, it's there forever. The body image goal doesn't get you that it's far. It's the consistency and frequency that's going to get you there. It's not the intensity. 
There's no shortcuts to mastery and movement. Destination doesn't change overnight, but your direction will. The gym is not the place to beat up the body that you hate. It's the place to build the body that you love. We are the gym that teaches people how to move instead of just exercise because we believe that health is about performance, not just body image.